Family history comes in many forms, but one of the most exciting is old home movies. Now, if you're lucky enough to have some old home movies, I'm going to show you the five best ways to polish them up and make them shine so that your family can enjoy them for generations to come. Let's get started. The first way to improve your home movies is to get the size right. That's one of the most challenging parts and probably the most overlooked when it comes to video production is you need to check and see what the size of the original footage is. Now, chances are you have already gotten your old home movies digitized, but if you haven't, do that first. <laughs> so you need to send them in to a reputable company and I will have links to the ones that I use in the uh, show notes for this video and down below in the video description. Uh, get them digitized at the highest quality that you can, and then make sure that you're familiar with what the size is. So let me show you how you can find the size of any video. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody in your family has sent you a video and you're not sure what the size is. Uh, we can take a look at that in our file manager on our computer. So the first thing we're going to do is find out what the size of this video is. I'm going to right click on it and go to properties. And we can see here that it's just over five megabytes in size, but most importantly, we need to know the actual size. So we're going to click on details and you can see here, this is the frame width is 480 by 360. Now keep in mind that an HD video might be more around, um, 1920 or 1980. So this is a very small video. Uh, as far as pixels, total pixels in the frame. And that means it's probably better suited for sharing on social media or on a website, something that can take a smaller video and display it properly. Um, so we're going to keep this in mind, 480 by 360. So now that you know what the size is, we're going to go into our video editing software and we're going to set the canvas size to match. And that's the key. When you see a video that's a little bit blurry or doesn't look quite right, oftentimes when it was reproduced or if it was corrected in some way, they didn't take into account the original size of the video. Uh, you can't take a really small video and make it really big and expect it not to get blurry or distorted. So what we're going to do is uh, go into Camtasia. That is the software program that I use to edit all of my videos. And again, I'll have a link for you in the uh, show notes and video description to our link for Camtasia. We appreciate it. If you decide to get it, you can certainly use our link that helps support this free content. But I use Camtasia and the first thing I do is go in and set the canvas size so that it matches up with the size of my original video. So here in Cantasia, we're going to come up here to the top and it says here, we're looking at 50%. That's just the size of the screen that they're showing us. This is about half the size of an, the normal video. If I click the down arrow, we're going to go to project settings. So you can see here, 1920 by 1080, that's an HD video. That's 1080 pixels and ours is much smaller. So we're going to look down here, see here, it actually kind of coaches you on how these are sized and what they're what best suited for social media. That's a, a smaller size. We can go to custom and we could put in the exact 480, but I think we also could do okay just with a preset. Um, frame size. We might have some black space on the top or the, or the bottom, the sides, but let's go ahead and put in our custom range. So here we've got 1980. We're going to put 480 by 360. So next we'll need to go and import the video. So I'm going to click it here and import the video into Camtasia and there it is. We click and drag it and drop it onto the timeline 
you can see it here and it fits perfectly inside this so this is really the original size and we're not doing anything to change the size okay so this video that I'm working with in this project is a uh, short little home movie that one of my viewers sent me her name is Kate and it's a wonderful little video of her with her siblings and her parents uh, when she was a child. The vi original video, as you could see, was pretty small, uh, but there were some other issues with it. And that leads us into our next best practice. One of those issues was speed. Did you notice how it's pretty fast? <laughs> Things are moving very quickly. It's really hard to kind of figure out who's who and just get a chance to look at their sweet faces. So there are several things that we can do in Camtasia to correct this. So number two is to correct the speed. Let's take a look and just play this video and kind of see how the speed looks. Got some background noise there. So I'm going to turn that down. So I'd say this looks a little speeded up, doesn't it? This can happen because of the, um, the little sprockets on the sides of the film uh, changing, um, frames missing, the digitization process. There's a number of reasons why this might happen. You can also see that there's a lot of cuts. So not only is it going quickly, but the person who's taking the video is trying to move around and capture all these moving kids and animals, and they're cutting from one scene to the next. When you're in the middle of filming, that doesn't seem so bad. But if you knit it all together, then it can seem kind of jumpy as if you're jumping from one thing to the next. And you can see that somebody else has already produced this a little bit. They put a little the end title at the end. Well, we can slow this down. So let's just kind of come back here towards the beginning. You can see that I've clicked on to select the video. That's why it's um, got the yellow line around it. If I select out of it, we're not changing this video. So I want to click to select it. And then we're going to look at the speed. So I'm going to right click on it. And you can see we have lots of different options. And here's the one we're looking for, add clip speed. So it's referring to this clip I might have multiple videos on my timeline, but right now I'm just working with the one clip. And on the right hand side, we now are looking at the properties of clip speed. Here you can see the size of our video. And down below the clip speed right now we're at 1.00, which means we're using the exact same speed that the original video is. It's 100% but I think we want to slow this down. So let's see what we can do here. What would happen if we just made this video two minutes long? Notice how much longer the clip is. It pretty much doubled it. So let's play it now. You know, at first it looked a little bit slow, but in reality, they probably were walking very slowly towards their dad as he's filming. And um, then it starts to kind of speed up. So this is not too far off. She looks like she's walking along. I also like the fact that this is slower because it means that we can actually see what's happening, see some of the faces. If we wanted to, we could speed it out up just a little bit. Um, let's say we just, we could put the seconds to zero. We could put uh, one minute and let's do one minute and 50 seconds. That's just a little bit shorter. That looks a little more natural. Let's go back to the beginning and just take a quick look. There they are. And see, you don't have to play it all again from the beginning. We can kind of what they call scrub. We can scrub along the timeline. Let's go back right where the boys are going to come down the stairs. Oh, 
I think that looks like actually a pretty good speed. So right there, we've made a nice improvement to it. And we've created a little longer video than the original one, which is nice. There's also opportunities, though, to do other things with speed. One of the things we can do is extend a frame. And that is going to pick a spot on the video where we want to kind of stop and get a chance to see that child. That's going to allow us to stop and show the viewer uh, the, the child on the screen before they fly by as it's going very quickly. So if we're going along here, here comes mom. Now that's, this part's going pretty quick. Yep, I think we'd like to see her a little bit longer. So one of the things we could do is stop right there and we can right click on the screen and extend the frame. We're really going to basically stop the motion and I'm going to extend it, you know, just let's say three, almost four seconds. Now let's go back and take a look. And let's play it again. there. So that gives us an opportunity while it's just kind of freeze framed to be able to add an annotation later, which we'll talk about in a minute and be able to put something here on the side to say who this child is. Let's keep playing and see if there's another opportunity to um, highlight somebody before they fly by. Here's one. He's running along. He gets right there. Now, one of the ways you can see how quickly this is moving, we can zoom in and get much more precise. Now let's scrub along right there. Right click, extend frame, and we play it. So let's come back to before. And you can always add more or less if I think, oh, well, that's not quite enough time. I can undo it. Come back here. And try it again. Let's do about five seconds. So there's quite a few opportunities along the way here. Now notice those all moved really quickly. So I'll spend some time adding a couple of extra frames here and there, and we'll probably end up adding maybe 10, 15 seconds to it, but it's gonna make it much more watchable and give you a chance to really see the kids. Another way that you can extend a frame is to click on the clip and split it right here in the spot where I want to extend the frame. So if I split it here, then I can just highlight these and move them down, select the end of the frame that I wanted to extend and right click on it and extend frame. Now I can drag this, so I can click this and I can drag this as long as I want. And you can see how long it is by that little um, text box that's showing up just down below. So let's try and play this and see if we like it. Now, if that feels a little long, maybe that's about long enough. Just drag it back to that spot and pop those right back on. Let's try it again. The third best way to polish up your old home movies is by correcting the color. Now, this particular video that I've been working with is um, kind of a black and white type film, so there may not be a whole lot we can do, but I've used color correction in many of my old home movies, and it's definitely something that if you're working with a color video, you might want to try. You can also use color correction to be kind of creative and distort things, which is certainly something that you could do in a, in a very creative moment. But generally speaking, um, there are a few things that we can do to kind of visually fix up the film that we're looking at. So let's take a look at that in Camtasia. 
All right, so something else that we can do is we can correct the color. And of course, this one is not a color film, so we may not want to do much to it, but I can show you how this works. You can see that because I've made some splits to extend my different frames, I'm going to just click on the screen and highlight all my clips. And you can tell they're highlighted because they turn yellow. Now I'm going to come up here to um, visual effects. There's the menu and we're going to click color adjustment. There's lots of different things that you can do here. It's really fun to play with. Um, you can colorize things, make them interesting. You can change the, um, the frame of the video. You can kind of round the corners. You can put the whole video in a device. So it looks like it's playing on a computer screen. There's lots of things you can do. I'm going to click color adjustment and drop it. And you can see it's going to apply to all of these. There we go. So it defaulted to kind of a look we I don't think I really want, but I can start adjusting back. So let's bring these items back. If we get to zero and a quick way to do this is just put this on zero brightness, contrast on zero, and that should get us back to the way it was originally. And we're going to make the saturation zero. Okay, so that's what the color was originally. We might decide, you know, I really want this to be darker. It's a little too light. You can intensify it. You can fade it out. You can also change that brightness. And you can even do this by clip. So if there's only one section that's just a little off, it's maybe too light or too dark, you can just change that clip by clicking to select that clip. We can also saturate this. So if we really wanted to add a little more of that kind of sepia tone tint to it, we can do that as well. These options work really, really well with color film that has been distorted over time. And you can just inch by inch change that color to exactly the way you want it. Gosh, after just implementing three of our five best strategies, uh, we've really seen some improvements to our home movie, and that's what we're going for. But there are a few more things that we can do. Number four is to add annotations. And really, we're adding context through the annotations. We can't assume that everybody's going to know who everybody is in this old home movie. In fact, have you got any old you know, photo albums at home where nobody wrote down the names or the places or the dates? Oh, it drives you crazy, particularly if you love family history and you're trying to get things right. Well, we don't have to leave our home movies unlabeled either. There are things that we can do to add that context to the film so that no matter how far into the future somebody is watching this home movie, they're going to know who they're looking at, what was important about it to the people who were involved, and uh, just any other context that will help them have a better understanding of what's going on in oftentimes a silent movie. And of course, many of our old home movies are silent. So let's put on our Cecil B. DeMille cap or our John Ford hat and um, add what they would have done to their silent movies, which is titles. And we will do them through annotations in Camtasia. So you'll find annotations over here on the left-hand menu. You can see here, here's our media bin where we imported our media. If we come down, here is annotations. So just click that. And now that's going to display your options. There are some great basic an annotations that come with Camtasia. You can also uh, create your own custom library under themes. You see, I have one here for genealogy gems. You can manage them. Um, but you can also go for bold. You see how it kind of changes the styles. Industrial. So I'll just go with basic. And you can also get more of these types of assets over at the TechSmith website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the film here and go to the first spot where I did an extended frame. This gave us some time to be able to add our annotations and really say who is who in the picture. So I'm going to go towards the front of the extended frame. And I could select a basic one, just the lettering, drag it onto the uh, canvas here. I could also, you know, be really specific and point at people 
we'd have to resize that, wouldn't we? That might be a bit much. Uh, or we could do something like this where we have a background. It's almost more like a label and that makes it really, really easy to read. And uh, th that might be a good choice, I think, here. So let's use a label. Okay, so we're going to work on this uh, for our first young man here. And Kate sent me her, her family group sheet. So let's take a look. Uh, that is Donald G. O'Rourke. So I'm going to double click on the text and type his name. Great. Now notice we have a lot of uh, extra white space at the top and the bottom. There's not a lot of room here. So one of the first things I'm going to do is grab this little handle at the top and pull it down so that it's right here where it just fits the box. And then I'm going to resize the box by taking the corner. And I can make that smaller as well. You can also change the properties and the spacing over here on the right hand side, these are the properties for this, they call it a call out. And you can tell um, we're working with the text. Here are the properties for the border of this annotation. You can see that uh, we have a kind of a green color border and we also have uh, the white background. I like the white background. I might wanna change my uh, background border. We can either match a color on the screen might actually black might kind of look nice or we could select from a color palette as well we can also change how thick the border is and I don't want to give it too much thickness because it just takes up a lot of space okay so that's pretty good uh, if I wanted to I could double click on this and I could bold it right now we're in regular font I'm gonna select a bold just to make it pop a little bit more now I can reposition this by clicking on it and I can place it anywhere I want to. So I think I will start here. And here's a trick. You can speed up this process by duplicating what you just created. So I'm going to click this annotation and I will just do control C on my keyboard or I could copy it here in the menu by right clicking. And then I'm just going to paste it. There's another one. So I can kind of stagger where they show up. Now we get here and you should see it on the screen, but we don't because it's right on top. So if we grab it and drag it. There's our second one. Okay. So that's going to be this young man. And let's go get his name. That's Patrick. Patrick M. So we can highlight just the first name in the middle initial, like Patrick M. O'Rourke. Great. And let's do that one more time. We're going to click to highlight it. Control C to copy. Stagger just a little bit more. Control V to um, paste it. Now notice the first one looks like it's disappeared from the screen, doesn't it? But look at your timeline. It's only going to be where the playhead shows. So notice when we are over the top of it, it shows up on the screen. We want this to extend all the way to the end of our extended frame. So we're going to grab the edge of each one of these annotations so that they're going to last the entire length of the extended frame. Now remember, we made a copy here, but it's on top of Patrick. So let's grab that. Move it up, move it over, and let's see who this child is. This is Terrence Michael. So we're going to highlight his name. In fact, I'm going to just save myself time of having to retype O'Rourke. There we go. All right, let's go see how that looks. Notice that Terrence took a little bit longer. I, I want to get his name on that screen as quickly as we can. So I'm going to come back to his annotation. And you can see it's highlighted because it's got the little dots around the edge of it here. 
I'm going to take the front of it and I'm going to drag it so it happens a little faster, a little quicker. I might even speed up Patrick's as well. Now let's do that again. Hmm, Terrence came in a little bit late again. I'm just going to make it a little quicker. Oh, I like that. Now you can have them pop in there, but here's one more thing that you can do with annotations. We can come to transition or behavior. I'm going to do a transition and uh, I like the fade. I just want to make it a little easier on the eye of the person who's watching. So I'm going to click and drag fade right onto the front of each of these annotations. So they're going to fade in nice and smooth and they're not going to be as jerky coming on the screen. Let's go back to the front and play it one more time. Very nice. All right, well, I'm going to get to work and do more annotations throughout the film so we know who everybody is. Awesome. Now we know who is in our home movie and so will everybody else for many generations to come. That takes us to number five, our fifth best practice for improving our home movies. And that is last but not least by any stretch, citing your source. Yep. We've added annotations to tell more about who is in the film along the way. But Really, the overall package of this video needs to be um, sourced as well, just like any good genealogy record. And I think a great place to do this might be through a beginning title, but also even more importantly, I like to put it at the end. So when they finish watching the video, they've enjoyed every last bit of it, they will see um, how this thing came to fruition, where it originally came from, who did the editing and perhaps you can even make notes about what was done. I mean, some of it's going to be obvious. Obviously you've added annotations, but if you've changed color, if you've corrected speed, you might want to make a mention at the end in the source citation, the end title about what you did that alters it from the very original piece. Uh, you know, sometimes we change our photos in some of the popular um, genealogy websites. We might enhance them or colorize them or even animate them. But it's important that when people look at these items, they know what the original was and what did not come originally with that item. Uh, what And maybe what's not even real. Um, if you're annotating and adding a voice, that may not be your ancestor's voice to a photograph. And you can do that over at MyHeritage. Well, the same thing holds true here for home movies. We want to make sure that people know the difference between what was original and real and what was added in post-production. So let's go cite our home movie source. So here at the end of the video, we come to this closing and then we have the end. Now, we don't know when that was added, but I'm going to take that off and we're going to put a, a custom title card at the end that includes all of our source information. So right here we get to the point of the black screen. I'm going to leave the playhead there and I'm going to grab the end of the film and just drag it to match up. There. So now, right now, this is how the film ends. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our call outs. Here's our under annotations. And I'm not going to take the one with the label. I am going to grab text only and plop that right down at the end. And you can see it shows up on my screen. So I've assembled some information that Kate provided. And um, first thing we have is, of course, this film was featuring the O'Rourke family. So I'm going to copy that, highlight this text and just paste it. Now, I know it looks like you can't see it, but don't worry. All we have to do is highlight because it's going to come from a Word document. 
Now, if I just typed it in there, it wouldn't do this, but if you are probably gonna be copying and pasting some information, uh, it might bring in different formatting. So once you've highlighted it, then we're gonna come over here and you can see the text color actually turned to black because that's what it was in Word. We're gonna put it back to white. We're gonna make it bold. We're gonna align it to be in the middle. <laughs> and now we're gonna make it a lot bigger. Let's try 20 and see how that looks. Okay, I'm actually gonna make this fit here. And that just helps us make sure that, oh, I love those little lines. It helps you make sure you're in the middle. So we are at 20. I'm actually gonna make this 24. Okay, so that's our first amount of text. Let's see how long that is. If we hover over it, it's five seconds. Let's see how that feels when you play it. That seems plenty of long enough. It could even be four seconds. And now I'm going to, again, same thing we did before with the callouts, we're gonna copy it. Control C and then Control V, and that just puts it right next door. And now we can take the next, next piece of information, the time frame. And Kate said that this movie was done about 1950. So I'm gonna highlight it and type circa 1950. She wasn't exactly sure of the date, but that's okay. That gives us a ballpark. And come back over here. We're going to paste again because we still have that original call out copied. Make sure it's nice and tight against the last one. And now we've got the place. Here is the street address where all that activity was taking place. Highlight that. Now again, it took the formatting from Word, so we have to come back here and change it up again, make sure we get that font size right, and we had it bolded and we had it centered. Great, there we are. So that's the place, and we're going to copy it one more time, get our cursor here. And the next thing is I have here, the video has been edited to correct contrast and speed and to add titles. We want to make sure people, people understand what they're seeing was original or not. So I can add that here. Something like that. And another one. There's the next one. Now we want to say who the source of this is. And it's from Kate. So I'll come back here, type source, Kate. Oh, we can fix this easy enough. And one more. This is, gives us a credit to the music. I'm gonna add a little music to this. So let's get this all highlighted. Here we go. Let's get that font back to the right size. Bolded and centered. And this is the name of the song. And let's do that. Let's go ahead and add some music, shall we? I'm gonna to go to my media bin, click the plus sign, import some new media, And then I'm going to zoom out so I can see the entire film. Here's the entire film. Look at how we highlight that here. Okay, just so you can see it. So we're zoomed in. It's about two minutes long now. I'm going to take this music and, and drag it on to the top track. And you can see it. if it's not quite long enough, I can drag another one and just add more. <laughs> okay, so we're going to Bring that to the end, it snaps right to the end. And there we are at the end. Last thing, remember the fades that we did on the uh, call outs? I think we should do that between each of our last titles. So I'm going to fade here. Keep dragging that and now let's take a look at the end.
great. Now, one last little thing. This is your little bonus thing that you can do to a video. We added that music, so that was our little bonus item, and we're gonna show you how to um, make sure that it fades out at the end. So I'm going to go to More and Audio Effects, grab a fade out, and just pop it there on the end so it fades nicely. I love this. I love home movies. I love bringing them to life and improving upon them and just getting them into tip top shape so that they can be enjoyed for just so many years to come uh, by countless people. And there are so many different ways you can share your home movies. You might want to upload it to YouTube and, um, you know, put some family information in there so that other people can find them. Um, a video like this, that's in this smaller format, this is really well suited for social media. Um, or, you know, texting to somebody or emailing to somebody. So um, there's just so many different ways to share your family history. And I think that moving pictures is one of the most exciting. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up some new tips and some ideas. Um, get to busy on your home movies and get them out there for the family to enjoy. And I want to thank you so much for coming by the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. Uh, we have lots of video here, and it's all about you, your family history, and learning more about how to do genealogy research. So if any of that interests you, click that subscribe button, hit that bell for the icon, the, uh, what is it, the bell icon, so you'll get notifications uh, about our upcoming videos. And I think probably the best way to stay in touch with me is to head over to my website, genealogygems.com. On the homepage, you can click the red button to uh, join our free email newsletter. You're going to get a bonus for doing that. I'm going to send you my best genealogy tips and tricks uh, in a PDF. So you'll get that as a thank you. But you'll also receive our weekly email newsletter. And that just lets you know about all the terrific new free content that we've got coming out each and every week. And all of it designed to entertain you as you learn about doing genealogy and family history. 
Again, I'm Lisa Louise Cook, and thank you so much for watching, my friend. I'll talk to you soon.